ontological commitment. We do not avoid ontological commitment simply because accepting a sentence or asserting a sentence just requires us to believe or assent to certain things. Um, two more consequences and then I'm done. So, so that's also, this is related to what Jonathan was talking about yesterday, uh, though this particular account is from uh, Ross Cameron at Leeds and Robbie Williams at Leeds. Um, they think that you can, um, if you construe uh, ontological commitments as truth maker, in terms of truth makers, then you don't have to paraphrase and you can say that there are chairs is made true by collections of atoms. Um, but so, so um, basically your ontological commitments of the sentence will be in terms of its truth makers, so you don't have to paraphrase away, you can still be literally assert this sentence. Um, so the sentence does not commit you to chairs according to them. It only commits you to atoms. Um, again, if I'm right about this way of explicating ontological commitment, this won't work because it's very innocent to talk about ontological commitment. Um, last one, consequence. Uh, this is again Jody Asoni and others. Um, some people think, well, to say that there is is not ontologically committing. Um, in order to have something that's ontologically committing, we need something like an existence predicate. And that doesn't have to be existence, first order existence. It can be uh, concreteness, ontological independence, um, present or whatever. So, so the presentist might say, yeah, we can talk about past objects. Yeah, they're past objects. Uh, but they're not present. So to really exist is to be, um, so quantifier exists and to be present, for instance. And the nominalists and so on can adopt this principle. And I'm going to say, well, again, they're trying to avoid ontological commitment. Well, this is rather innocent to talk about ontological commitment, so this, again, will not work, at least not as formulated. Okay, so, conclusion, very quickly, basically, um, I think that ontological commitments, given the failures of many of the ways to explicate ontological commitment, should be understood in terms of uh, what we are rationally required to believe. I think there's textual evidence in Quine for doing it this way, which I haven't been able to go into. Um, on this um, particular way of construing it, ontological commitment would be a relation between an intentional act and a hyper intention. And, and uh, at the very end, as we saw, well, to say that we ontologically committed to something uh, is, is rather cheap and neutral on, on sort of the nature of the quantifiers. That's it. Mm -hmm. So 
but, but that would of course generalize, so we, it would be even more hyper-intentional in a way than you suggested, because we, we should strictly speaking never say, your theory commits you to there being Fs, but rather your theory commits you to there being the things that play the F role in your theory, whatever they play. Yeah, no, no, that would be an interesting consequence. Uh, let me just say that, that of course, the possible world interpretation of, of propositions probably will not work because there was this independent way of showing that the uh, ontological commitment relation is, is hyper-intentional. And so you would, have, you would need um, it to be a relation to something like a sense or so, so, so you could get the substitution failure from that. Whereas if you have a possible world interpretation of a proposition, you wouldn't get substitution failure. It'd be, that would be more like the resilient account. That wouldn't work. That would give us some counterintuitive consequences. But the second part of what you said, uh, I think that's an interesting uh, suggestion, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I would be all in favor of that, actually, but um, well, it would be even more relative to, um, to agents framework. To? The, the agents framework, was not what you were suggesting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't think we could, get, I mean, we, it would not be as radical as to include possible worlds in the uh, propositions, but I think it would be, uh, yeah, it would be worth thinking about, actually. I would, I would like that. So, so the possible worlds was just an illustration, maybe that was misleading. I wasn't... Uh, yeah, right, right, right. So, yeah, that was why I was sort of dividing yeah. up into... Or just as you, you say there are numbers, so that's just a, yes. that's a different... Community. I have the theory of what numbers are, and I actually claim it's analytic. And then are you committed to there being those whatever platonic... Right, right, right. So, no, that would be... Um, that's interesting. That would be... Uh, yeah. Um, I absolutely like that. <laughs> you. Um, Rick, uh, I, I want to ask you... What the differences are between your approach and, and another approach, I would suggest. Okay. Um, the other approach, I mean, so motivation come for it comes from the, the, the observation that many of these issues of, of commitment and rationality that you're talking about are not specifically issues about ontological commitment, they're much more general issues about theoretical commitment. So, when does accepting S commit us to, yeah. to T? Yeah. So, the more general approach would say, well, let's deal with that issue first. Uh, and maybe the, you're right, the right answer is. In terms of rationality and so on. But the, then this approach I'm suggesting says, well, for the ontological case, we just need to the case, consider the case in which the second proposition or sentence is of the form there are x's or something of that form. And the, the, and so it, it, just fall, it just falls out as a special case of the general theory oh. invoking the, the Kleinian principle that, that there's, as it were, there's nothing more to ontological questions than questions of what there is. Right, right. No, well, yeah. I, 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 how different would that be from? Um, yeah. So, so, uh, so, as I'm understanding you, so you would start by, by or you could start anyway, with, with uh, what, what I was, what, what I ended with. Um, so you get like all these, uh, the range of criteria. So presupposing, and accepting, and then uh, is, is your proposal that you would pick one of those to be the candidate for ontological commitment, or would you even want to? have the sentence to be the primary bearer of ontological commitment. No, no, my, my, well, my suggestion was you forget all about the, the ontological bit. Just think about the more general issue of theory and commitment. Yeah, so well, which, which, which of the ones is... Well, so when, when does accepting S commit us to T? Yes. Were, were those things are both sort of sentential or propositional? Okay, so um, to deal with that issue first, yeah. and, and, and then bringing the ontology in the way that Klein suggests by just I mean, treating the issue as about ontological commitment as simply the issue as theoretical commitment to statements of the form there are X's, existentially quantified statements. Uh, right, 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 right. Um, yeah, I, 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 as I'm not seeing that as inconsistent with this. Uh, so, so you're starting out by saying, well, well, when are you accepting a certain theory, right? And then what, what follows from that? Yeah. And then you restrict the approach to just those sentences that would be that would be quantified in his sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah actually, I don't. I wouldn't have any. I, I think that would be an interesting um, uh, way to go. That, that's a good suggestion. I think ultimately, it wouldn't it wouldn't lead us to the kind of, of substantial? So, so it wouldn't have the result that. Objectual quantification implies ontological commitment, where substitutional quantification does not. I don't think. I still think I would get that consequence that we would have a certain neutrality in terms of talking about ontological commitment, because the quantifier. I mean, so on the, pro, the approach that I'm suggesting, um, you can interpret the quantifiers whichever way you like, and you would still get. Yeah, um, I think that might go right. I mean, it seems to me the attraction of the approach was that it was it was sort of cleaner because.